assalamu alaikum sisters i am dr shajita melato and i have prepared this video as part of moana talk series i am a pediatric allergist immunologist and i am currently practicing in jacksonville florida so what we have done this time is to compile a list of questions that you guys had with regards to allergies and i'll try to address each one of them to the best of my expertise through this question and answer series i'll be touching upon drug allergy food allergy and pollen allergy so let's begin so the first question is my daughter got reaction on her skin rashes when she was given penicillin when she was a year old now that she is 8 years old will she be still having allergic reaction to penicillin do you recommend taking penicillin if she has to take antibiotics a lot of people especially in childhood can develop reaction to antibiotics that may not necessarily have been the classic allergic reactions that are life threatening approximately 10% of patients report an allergy to penicillin however the majority of patients greater than 90% may not truly be allergic allergies change over time and even in patients with a history of severe reaction such as anaphylaxis they lose their penicillin allergy so if you think you are allergic to penicillin it is worth discussing your history with your local allergist who may suggest testing now the test involves a skin prick test with two forms of penicillin and a subsequent intradermal test in which um, a small amount of each form of the penicillin is placed just under the skin if these tests are negative it is highly unlikely that a penicillin allergy is present this is also usually followed by an oral challenge usually to amoxicillin followed by an observation period the entire procedure may take up to 2 to 3 hours if the patient does okay with no reaction penicillin can be used there after and the patient is not at risk of having a serious immediate reaction The next question is my son just turned 2 2 days ago when he eats certain chocolates containing hazelnuts he starts coughing and sometimes even vomit but he's perfectly fine when he eats peanuts and most other nuts is that an allergic reaction and what do you recommend when such reactions happen do i have to give benadryl Now I'm going to couple this with another question which is how do we know our kids have food allergies what to watch out for and how can we detect it A food allergic reaction involves the immune system Your immune system controls how your body defends itself So if you have an allergy for instance to nuts your immune system identifies the nuts as an invader or as an allergen and it immediately reacts by producing certain allergy specific antibodies which are called as the IgE antibodies and these antibodies they travel to the cells and they release certain chemicals which are called as histamine and they cause the allergic reaction now the symptoms of the allergic reaction to foods they are generally seen on the skin which uh, present as like hives itchiness swelling of the skin there can be gastrointestinal symptoms which may be vomiting or diarrhea there can be lung symptoms like wheezing or shortness of breath and sometimes potentially life threatening reaction called as anaphylaxis one has to remember that a food allergy can cause anaphylaxis even by ingesting a microscopic amount of food now coming back to the first question about the hazelnut hazelnut is a type of tree nut tree nut allergy is one of the eight most common food allergies affecting the us population tree nuts include almonds brazil nuts cashews hazelnuts pecans pistachios and walnuts tree nuts grows on trees whereas peanuts grow underground and they are considered as legumes so an allergy to one tree nut does not necessarily mean an individual is allergic to other tree nuts that being said there are certain tree nuts that are closely related like cashews with pistachios and pecans with walnuts 
Now, I would recommend consulting an allergy stimnologist who can discuss the history with you and perform the necessary allergy testing, which is usually a skin prick test and or a blood test. But until then, you need to strictly avoid hazelnut containing foods and get an injectable epinephrine for severe reactions. Epinephrine is the most effective treatment to prevent death from anaphylaxis. Whereas antihistamines like Benadryl, they are just considered to be an adjunctive medication that are you know, used to reduce the symptoms, but they should not be used as like first line treatment for anaphylaxis. So Benadryl is an antihistamine, so it takes about like 15 minutes to start acting. But in case of like severe reactions like anaphylaxis, which progresses in seconds, one needs to act quickly and use epinephrine. The third question, heartburn, sore stomach, burping, gas problems. Not sure if this is caused due to some food allergies. What causes heartburn? What to avoid eating or drinking during that time? No, this is not food allergy. Based upon our previous discussions, you probably are now aware what and how the food allergies present. Now, these symptoms that you describe are more likely due to what we call as gastroesophageal reflux disease or simply called as reflux. There are a few lifestyle modifications that can be done. Uh, there are some dietary modifications that include like avoiding foods like chocolate, caffeinated beverages, peppermint, because these foods, they tend to induce reflux. Also avoiding acidic foods like colas, orange juice, tomato sauce, high fatty foods, and avoid laying down as soon as you eat. The next question, dust mites allergy and pollen allergies found has been triggering asthma symptoms concerned about the nasal steroids and side effects or of not treating and harming her airways. She is seven, congested, chronic cough, but otherwise happy and active, should we seek a second opinion regarding the medication? The first line treatment for allergic rhinitis or what we call as hay fever is nasal steroids. So they help to control the inflammation in the nose. And it is important to note that these are not like the bodybuilding or the anabolic steroids. The potential side effects include dryness, burning, stinging, nosebleeds. These can be prevented by using it the proper way, by spraying in the nose and pointing away from the septum or the midline of the nose, as you can see in this picture. Now, if there is underlying asthma, it is of utmost significance that your allergic rhinitis is well controlled. Otherwise, it can affect your asthma. So if in spite of using the nasal steroid, your daughter continues to have symptoms, you need to discuss this with her allergist. She may need to be started on inhaled steroid medication, which uh, help decrease the inflammation in the airway of your lungs and they prevent the asthma flare-ups. The next question is seasonal allergies, pollen allergies, how best to deal with it for kids. Uh, symptoms are like sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes, etc. So what is pollen? Pollen represents the male fertilizing agent of most of the flowering plants, trees, grasses, weeds, and also the major allergen that causes symptoms of seasonal allergic rhinitis which is commonly called as the hay fever. Now, most trees pollinate from the months of February through May, and grasses pollinate from June through July, and weeds pollinate from August until the first frost of the year. There are some simple steps that one can take to reduce the exposure to the pollen. So some of them are like, as listed in the slide, like staying indoors when the pollen count is high, when returning from outdoors, you want to remove the clothing and shower to remove any pollen that may be sticking on to one's clothes, skin, hair, and these clothes should be kept in a separate hamper and not on the beds. Now, when you're traveling in a car, you want to keep the windows closed. And for those who are allergic to grass, 
you avoid lawn mowing or raking leaves. So these are just some general measures, but depending upon the severity of the symptoms and also if there is any other underlying comorbidities like asthma, I would also recommend again seeing an allergist who will perform the testing to the common environmental allergens in your area and help come up with the treatment plan. So your physician may also talk to you about like medications for temporary relief like uh, some of them are like antihistamines, the nasal steroids, etc., which uh, I had discussed in the last slide. Now, if your symptoms continue or you, if you have them for many months or years, your allergist may recommend um, allergy shots. The next question, which I think is our last question, is in summer, kids have some kind of white rashes on their face. Are these a kind of allergies too? or some sort of deficiency. Well, rashes tend to be tricky and can best be diagnosed by actual inspection. So the information provided in the question is not enough to come to a proper diagnosis. That being said, I can discuss briefly about some of the common type of rashes that one can see in kids that can lighter their skin. One of the most common ones is called as a pityriasis alba which affects the children between the ages of 3 to 16 and it's usually uh, affecting the face and upper parts of the body and their exact mechanism is unknown. This is not harmful and it's more noticeable in children with darker skin and it's also more noticeable during the summer months because the surrounding skin tans. It is not because of an allergy or vitamin deficiency. Simple measures like moisturizers and sunscreens will help. If there is itching, low-dose steroid creams, that may also be helpful. There are other conditions that can look like this, like eczema and certain fungal infections, so it's best you get it checked out by your pediatrician. Well, that was the last question, and I hope that this presentation was helpful. I would recommend trustable online resources like the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology for any further questions. Thank you and Assalamu Alaikum.